a successful multidisciplinary urgent management of a life-threatening intraprocedural bleeding after EUS fine needle biopsy of a pulmonary mass. An 82-year-old man with diagnosis of adenocarcinoma of the right colon was referred to our thoracic unit due to a pulmonary lesion suspected for malignancy in the left upper lobe. CT scan showed a 40 mm lesion in left upper lobe and no lymph nodes suspected to be malignant in thorax and abdomen. Endoscopic ultrasound with fine needle biopsy was scheduled in order to distinguish primary tumor from colonic metastasis. Patient suffered from atrial fibrillation and arterial hypertension, so he was under anticoagulant therapy with a pixaban, a direct acting oral anticoagulants, which was switched to low molecular weight heparin more than 72 hours before the procedure. The last administration of heparin was more than 12 hours before the procedure. EOS view showed the pulmonary lesion behind the aorta, with a window for biopsy between the aortic arch and the left subclavian artery, so we performed a fine needle biopsy of the lesion with a 22 gauge francine tip needle after excluding an interposed vessel with color Doppler mode. At the end of the procedure, an abundant amount of fresh blood started to get out from the mouth, even if esophagus was clean without any sign of transparietal bleeding, so bleeding was identified coming out of the glottis. Oxygen saturation suddenly lowered under 50% and blood pressure dropped to 60-40 mm of mercury. Endotracheal intubation administration of vasoactive drugs, and volume resuscitation with high volume of saline maintained vital signs. Simultaneously, the thorax surgeon performed a bronchoscopy with the aim to identify and treat the bleeding. Bronchoscopy showed a mixture of fresh blood and blood clots filling the left bronchus, but it was not possible to arrive to the site of bleeding due to its peripheral location. And the bronchial treatment included administration of local tranexamic acid and, simultaneously, aspiration of blood and clots. Bronchoscopy after treatment showed a residual amount of fresh blood, but oxygen saturation was around 90%, even if, unfortunately, patient developed a right pneumothorax during ventilation. Bronchial toilet was performed again and again, until saturation permanently kept above 95% and pressure raised over 160 mm of mercury without vasoactive drugs. X-ray at time zero showed right pneumothorax and diffuse lung thickening due to blood diffusion, so a chest drainage was inserted. A cardiac ultrasound did not show any sign of cardiac ischemic disease, so we removed tracheal tube. Chest drainage was removed after three days, and it was discharged one week later. At one month of follow-up, it did not complain further biopsy-related bleeding signs, and lung was clean at X-ray evaluation. Histology showed a squamous cell carcinoma, subtype non-small cell lung cancer, and immunohistochemical examination showed 40% of cells positive for PDL1. In conclusion, post fine needle biopsy in the pulmonary bleeding is an extremely rare and life threatening adverse event, but an appropriate and immediate management exponentially improves outcome, even when major events occur. EUS fine needle biopsy of pulmonary masses is a safe technique. But it is fundamental to have both, a dedicated and shared room where performing both bronchoscopy and digestive endoscopy, 
and a multidisciplinary team including endoscopist, anesthesiologist, bronchoscopist, interventional radiologist and thoracic surgeons.